Hello world, it's Craig. In some videos talking about my solid state music workalike board, I made frequent use of the term RS latch. To add a serial port, I had created an RS latch in the traditional method of cross-connecting a pair of NAND gates. And a viewer was quick to leave a comment to definitively inform me that in no uncertain terms, I was clueless because there was no such thing as an RS latch. There are only SR latches. So I need a survey. If someone were to mention an RS latch or an RS flip-flop to you, what would be your immediate response? Now there's various latches, of course. There's D-type flip-flops, SR latches, JKT, and so on. But is that viewer right that RS latches only exist in the minds of washed up boomers? I'm not saying that every set reset type of flip-flop is an RS, you know, far from it. I'm saying that specifically, latches made by cross-connecting NANs or NORs are RS latches or RS flip-flops. Now the flip-flop's a fundamental memory cell and the RS is the most basic of all the flip-flops or latches and goes back to the beginning of time. Electronic ones at least to the Eccles and Jordan trigger circuit described in their 1920 patent. And obviously there were mechanical ones before that. If you go back to the 40s and 50s, the general flip-flop created by cross-connecting relays, vacuum tubes, discrete components, logic gates, or whatever, it was just called a set clear flip-flop. And that later seemed to have been changed to a set reset flip-flop or a reset set flip-flop. Let's briefly look at a couple of ways of making a flip-flop using cross-connected gates. And I presume that most viewers are already familiar with this, so I'll be pretty brief. We can cross-connect a pair of NOR or NAND gates. It's got two inputs. One will set the flip-flop, and the other will clear the flip-flop. And it's going to have two outputs, a Q and a not Q. If the flip-flop was created with NOR gates, then the reset and assert are high. If the output of the top gate is Q, output of the latch, then the input to the holding gate is the reset, and this other one is going to be the set. If created with a NAND gate, then the set and reset are asserted low. You can work through the logic states yourself to see that once set or reset signal comes in, the latch is then stable in either condition. In short, when any input is asserted, the cross connection effectively maintains that input until it's overridden by asserting the other input. Now there is a forbidden condition, which is when both inputs are asserted. For either configuration, the latch will go into a known state under that forbidden condition. In the NOR version, if both inputs are asserted, the output of both NORs will be at logic low. So Q and Q bar are zero. In the NAND version, the forbidden state, when both inputs are asserted, when Q and Q bar will both go high. Now there's a few instances where the forbidden state can actually be used to your advantage, but it's rare and actually whenever I do design that forbidden state into a circuit, I always worry that future me won't be able to understand what, what I did. So early on, these latches had a number of names, such as trigger and clear circuits, but in the 60s, the industry settled on RS flip-flop. Here's an n-gram from 1940 to 1960. This red bump is RS latch, and that showed up as the result of a 1953 electronic design magazine, and anything SR didn't show up at all. The blues are just different capitalization of RS flip-flop. Now, TI makes an effort to be as accurate as they can. And here for this latch, they actually call this a not S, not R latch, which is technically correct because the inputs are asserted low, but that's a little bit too pedantic for me. But it's related to something that tried to get a foothold in the 80s or 90s, which was the idea that cross-wired RS latches actually had a different names for a reason. I came across this in a little tidbit from Microchip regarding the difference between an RS latch and an SR latch. And I have seen this also in textbooks from the late 80s or the early 90s. Their claim is that the difference between an RS latch and an SR latch is the state of the output in the forbidden state. Remember the forbidden state is when both the set and the reset are asserted. If you choose a NAND version, then when they're both asserted, the forbidden state will make both outputs go high. So not just Q or Q bar goes high, but both outputs go high. If you choose your NOR version, then the forbidden state on the inputs make both outputs go low. Now believers in this forbidden state nomenclature would call the NAND version 
a set reset, an SR, because they say set somehow has a higher priority. They would call the NOR version a reset latch or a reset set, RS latch, because they see the forbidden state of low logic having the priority. But I'm not a forbidden state subscriber for the following reason. When I'm designing a circuit and have made the decision to put in a scratch-built latch, I usually don't know if that's going to be a NAND version or a NUR version until very quite, you know, quite late, essentially at the end of the design stage. After the rest of the design has settled into its final form, only then do I go back and work out and see which assertion level for the set and reset works best for that particular circuit. You know, you always have Q and Q bar available, and if that circuit isn't using the forbidden state, then the choice between NAND and NOR depends on what inputs you have more readily available. And I also take that into account with whatever glue logic I may have left over. You know, what gates do I have? Do I have a couple of NANDs or a couple of NORs left over? That may be the deciding factor. And when all of this is taken into account, then I choose between the NAND and the NOR version. But at that point in the design, I'm certainly not, not going to start referring to it as a SR latch just because I picked the NAND version. That's actually what I thought the commenter was saying. You know, I'm frequently misstating something or another in my videos. I presumed they were a forbidden state believer. So I worked through it, and sure enough, the commenter was correct that if you subscribe in the forbidden state nomenclature, in the end, I used a NAND gate, and that has a set output in the forbidden state, even though I wasn't using the forbidden state as a part of the circuit. But I agreed with him that since it was a NAND gate, and if you believed in the forbidden state nomenclature, they would call this an SR latch. And I thought that would be the end of it, but it wasn't. It turns out the commenter wasn't a forbidden state believer, he was something else. So if you go and pick up any of your data books or textbooks from the 60s or 70s discussing RTL, DTL, or TTL, and they'll have full chapters discussing the cross-connected RS latch. But, and this is where the, where the story really starts. Does anyone remember that in the 70s, there was a concerted effort to rename the RS flip-flop, or the RS latch, over to be called the SR latch. If we go back to this n-gram and expand this up to 1970, now we start to see some SR flip-flop in orange and SR latch in green. Expand up to the 1980s, RS flip-flop is dying out in favor of RS latch. This expands out to 1990, and it's all but over for the term flip-flop. And then if we jump ahead to 2020, we can see that SR latch dominates all of them. Considering their key role, the integrated circuit version of the SR actually came surprisingly late. JK and D flip-flops go way, way back, long before SR latches in all the logic families, including TTL. There are very few TTL RS latch chips. After all, you know, real designers just lashed together a couple of NAND gates and made their own RS latches. The 7471 was one of the first integrated circuit RS latches, and it offers much more than just a simple latch. It's a clocked, anded RS flip-flop. After the 7471, you need to go way up to the 74279 to find another RS latch. That's a quad RS, and it literally is just four little sets of cross-connected NANDs inside a package. And it's a handy little four-bit storage cell if you need it. Here's where the story gets interesting. If you go look through your data books, Pick one from the very early 70s and another one from the late 70s. And I think you will see that the old speak term RS was eliminated along with the term flip-flop in favor of new speak SR. And the party revolution seems to take most of the 70s to complete. Fairchild called them RS through most of the 70s. National changed to SR in the data books in about 76 but they didn't re-edit any of their training or educational materials. So the data books say SR, but all the training materials still said RS all through the 80s. Here's a particularly humorous change. 1972-73 catalog ITT had this called out as an RS flip-flop. But in the 1974 catalog, they wanted to edit that out. So they changed it and they called it an RD-delip 
dilop, which I'm glad didn't catch on because that is not something that rolls off the tongue. Browsing through the data books and textbooks, it became obvious that I was not going to pin down who or why this name change happened. In the 1972 timeframe, ITT came out with what seemed to be the first reference to a set reset latch in an IC, and it's the 74118 hex SR latch. So the 74118 broke with tradition. And if it wasn't the first to be called an SR latch, it was certainly one of the first to be called an SR latch instead of an RS latch. Now the 74118 had to be called a set reset for an exceptionally good reason, because it's a hex latch. Just six pairs of cross-connected NAND gates, each with individual sets, but with a common reset for all six. So it really is a set, 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 reset latch, since it would make sense that there had to be multiple sets before the whole device would be reset. And I realized I wasn't getting to the bottom of this new nomenclature trend by just looking at old data books. I needed to go to the source of this first SR latch. Since it was developed by ITT, I tracked down and I made a new buddy, Malcolm, who was the TTL product marketing manager at ITT when the 74118 was introduced. And according to Malcolm, this chip was created for a very specific application. It was something like a little state machine register on a clothes washer or something that kept track of which cycle was running. The controller logic would set each latch when that cycle was operating, and then when the whole process was completed, all the latches would be simultaneously reset in preparation for the next batch. So I asked Malcolm about this whole RSSR naming thing. And in a couple of follow-up emails, Malcolm thought it over, and he was pretty sure that the naming of the SR latch was simply to clarify its use and not an attempt to completely revise the standard nomenclature at the time. So at least in his mind, if it did cause a sea change in terminology, it was completely unintentional. Now, I admit I was a little disappointed that I didn't find a definitive reason why the industry changed from RS flip-flop to SR latch. But if I'm being honest, you know, I had never really noticed that term RS latch died out, so nothing lost, nothing really gained. You know, the old saying goes like this, everyone dies twice, first when they breathe their last breath, and second when their name is spoken for the last time. So I may be the last one, but I'm carrying the term RS latch flip-flop to my grave. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and would like to chime in on your thoughts of what you call these things and what you remember from that part of history. So you say SR latch, I say RS latch. Let's call the whole thing off. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.